there was an explosion from behind us that threw us all to the ground. I lost contact with the missionaries, but I knew where I was, screaming and hollering and there was smoke. And so I stood up to try and run out with everybody else to get out of harm's way and found myself lying face down on the floor again and I realized that my leg was compromised to the point that I, I just couldn't move. And it was at that time that I reached in my pocket and got my cell phone and I called Pam. When I answered the phone and Richard said, Pam, I knew instantly that something was wrong. I could tell by the tone of his voice. He said, listen carefully. There's been a bombing. I have burns on my hands and face and I've broken my leg. And then he repeated it three times. There was a, a thought or a feeling that came to me. I, I knew the Lord knew who I was and where I was and what had just happened, what I was feeling. It, it was a thought, it was an instantaneous impression. And I also knew that he knew about the people in the airport and what they were feeling and what had just occurred and what was happening in their lives. And the third thing that I knew all in one same almost spiritual breath was that the Savior had suffered for all these injuries and all these feelings and everything that their family was going to feel. He had suffered for those. And so now, with that assurance, I knew that I could just wait there and not, uh, there was nothing to worry about. I was laying by a young man. I just saw him with this worried look on his face. And I, uh, I gave him a thumbs up. And I said, it's gonna be okay. I, I don't know if he understood the language, but I heard myself say that it was gonna be okay. And I knew it would be okay. I knew it would be okay. When we got to the hospital, they put me into a room where they could take my vital signs and get me prepared for surgery. Mr. Nobby was in a terrible condition, I must say. So he had very severe injuries to both of his lower legs uh, with severe muscle injury, but also quite significant burns as well. And um, on top of that, he was full of shrapnel that were uh, dispersed throughout his body. It was not only the uh, muscle or soft tissue injury, he had uh, other problems. I remember them starting to cut my suit off to prepare me for surgery, and that's the last thing I can remember. The doctor and I sat and visited, and so we had a photograph of Richard's leg at that time. And I looked at that, and it was half gone, and so I just thought that they would have to amputate. The objective was obviously to, to save both of his legs, but meanwhile keep him in a stable condition. I was just in shock for a good part of the time, trying to understand what had happened. There was a machine breathing for him, and he was intubated, and I could see his lips, and I could see his, his eyes, so I knew it was him. Two of our children had come over two days after the bombing, and I vaguely remember being introduced to them. That was hard to see. That was difficult to, to look. I remember feeling not anger, but more sorrow that, that someone I love was in such a state. Richard became stable, and it wasn't until four weeks from the bombing that we were able to return back to Utah. Arrived here safe and sound, awake. Uh, having a number of tubes removed so that he was uh, actually feeling a little more like normal. But he has a long ways to go. All over one third of his body was burned. Nerves had been severed, bones had been fractured. He was a challenge and he had a high risk for potential amputation. It was just nice to have him home and especially for my mom. It was neat to see her just finally relieved of that burden of being in a foreign country with her husband trying to take care of them in a different language. That was a big relief. 
When we were at the burn unit at the University of Utah Hospital, I just had the idea come to mind that I needed to talk to the grandchildren about this because their minds are impressionable and maybe somewhere in the depths of their mind they were thinking that this isn't fair. The biggest thing that stood with me was what my grandpa said, like I think at the first, and he said, I don't blame God for what has happened. We have to go through life having complete trust in God and faith in the Savior. It was so good for my kids to hear that if there's one person you can trust in those hard times, it is God. He's not going to be the one that leaves you. Hold on tight to him and don't blame him. When the doctor said that my legs were good as they were and that we're just going to rehabilitate and get stronger and go through those sessions several times a week, I was excited. I had some goals in mind that kept me motivated. One of them was to play Frisbee with our grandchildren. One of them was to walk around Temple Square unaided. I just wanted to do simple things that became monumental for me, so that was what I focused on. That day he was discharged from the hospital. It was surreal to think that we have gone in the span of just a few months from wondering if he's going to even survive to being discharged from the hospital. We've been waiting for this for a long time. There was a time when we invited he and my mom out for dinner. And he had to come in through the garage because the stairs were easier and he was on his hands and knees and he had to crawl up the stairs to get into the house. Okay. All right. He progressed to a walker, and then it was to a little cane, I believe, and then finally he just, one day just was able to get out of the car and walk up the front stairs and in through the front door. It was an awkward walk, as some might look at it, but it was, it was a, a, a hundred meter dash for me. Temple Square has been my favorite spot on earth. So uh, on that eight month mark, we drove down to Salt Lake. She got me into the wheelchair. We walked up to Temple Square and I said, this is the day. I walked all the way around it and then to celebrate, she took me to dinner. So that was, that was a monumental day for us to be able to, to do that. Now I, I knew I could do whatever I needed to do. That was the catalyst. It had to be incremental and I couldn't leapfrog over the basics. I had to go through the basics to get to where I am today. I know there's lots of people, countless people that have greater limitations than I have, but I only know what I've gone through. And that's my celebration, it's what I've gone through. The thing I look forward to most about seeing the doctors is just to be able to express in some measure my gratitude to them, just to thank them for the service they gave us and along with all the other patients and wounded victims of that day. Very good to see you again. It gives me a real positive feeling to see him again, to see him in good health and good spirit as well, um, and also to meet him and, and the rest of his family, of course. The pure fact that Richard takes the time and effort to come all the way from the United States to this hospital here in Belgium to meet not only me but the whole staff makes it worthwhile being a doctor and being part of this wonderful hospital team. <laughs> nice to meet you again. You changed. You have hair now. <laughs> I really feel that despite all that we've gone through, that uh, I have been blessed, we have been blessed beyond measure. The state he was in the first time I saw him, I would never think he would be where he's at now. I think that a lot of this has to do with his faith. It's so wonderful to see him get his life back and to smile and uh, to continue in that course that I'm sure he already knew was gonna happen, but it wasn't clear to all the rest of us. One of the great lessons I was learning was that, uh, that the Lord's will has to become our will. We have to come to the point to give the Savior his victory. 
Sometimes we fight against that because we want our victory. We want the way things used to be. We want it our way, but to get us from where we are to where we need to be it takes a lot of stretch and growth. And he puts us through difficulty so that he can get us where he wants us to be. I know that the Lord is aware of what's happening to us and what happened to us at that time. And I put my trust in him and I was fully aware that he was in control. Once I audibly told him that whatever you want to do, whatever your plan is, I'm okay with that. And as hard as that was to, to say it out loud, it was, um, it was a turning point for me to know that his love for his children is something beyond what we can comprehend. It's been a miraculous, miraculous journey because of the mercy of the Lord.